So why is keeping pace with change inside organizations so difficult? Most look to employees for the answer. They're not ready to change. They don't have the skills of the future. They don't want to change. And while some of this might ring true, in fact, it's not the full answer. We have to look elsewhere for the full answer. We have to look to the decision makers, the budget holders, the influencers, those who determine whether an organization is a disruptor, really outpacing change, or being disrupted, slowly, slowly stagnating into irrelevance. We have to look to leaders. And in case you're wondering who are leaders, whether you're the CEO leading the entire organization or you're a team lead leading two people, you are a leader because you set the pace for change. So why are leaders struggling to adapt to this fast-paced digital post-pandemic and now even green world? Because for much of the last century, yesterday, today, tomorrow, look the same. The world was predictable, it was certain, and it favored the command and control Euro leader who rallied the troops around short-term financial goals. The one who manages return to his narrow shareholder group, but disregards return to his broader stakeholder group. But that's not the world we live in now. The world is different now. It is fragile, it is volatile, it is complex, it is uncertain, and it's ambiguous. Black swans are becoming ordinary. And for that kind of world, we need leaders who are prepared to shift their mindset, to shift their behaviors. Leaders who recognize that the skills that got them to today are not necessarily going to be the skills that serve them tomorrow. So let me share with you four behavioral shifts that can help you transition to a change smart, responsive and future fit leader. Instead of having all the answers, or believing that you need to provide all the answers, be a leader who asks better questions. That's number one. And so you can help others and others can help you uncover the unknowns. Number two, encourage experimentation. Nelson Mandela said, I never fail, I never lose, I either win or I learn. Learning is what you need to do. Number three, instead of focusing on intellect, focus on weak you, not IQ, weak you. Think about combining intellect with emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence, transgenerational intelligence, embrace diversity. And number four, and my favorite one, focus on learning and unlearning, continuous learning, but not just the learning and the relearning, but the unlearning is equally as important. It's probably the most difficult thing to do. Why? Because learning requires you to be curious but unlearning requires you to be courageous and humble enough to know and to say, I don't know.